We're going to visit the fantastic Castle of St. George up on top of the hill overlooking Lisbon, Portugal. These extensive and well-preserved ruins are considered to be the oldest monument in Lisbon. The castle is right in the city on top of the hill next to Alfama, the city's oldest residential district, and overlooking downtown Lisbon. It's quite easy to get here. You can either arrive by bus or tram or taxi, or like in our case, we're walking. It's a very pleasant walk. The hill is not too steep, and it's taking us through part of the Alfama. Back in the Middle Ages, say in the 12th century, the castle and Alfama were the entire extent of Lisbon. And still today, they retain that historic character. Since the castle is quite high above the city, you get some dramatic views looking into downtown Lisbon and out to the waterfront and the hills beyond. And we'll show you uh, more of those views in a little bit after we get inside and tour the castle. The castle can be thoroughly enjoyed from the outside, but it's really worth paying the admission charge to go inside and find out what's there. You'll discover that it's much more than an empty shell surrounded by walls. There's a lot of stairs and passageways and rooms and turret and viewpoints to experience. There's even a small museum you can visit and look at the artifacts from the ancient days. St. George's Castle is a romantic ruin with ancient stone walls and ramparts overlooking the city and lush landscaping that has transformed this fortress into one of the nicest parks in town, making this a favorite place for locals and visitors to relax. While the castle is mostly gardens today, in ancient times this was the crowded walled city where most of the people lived and it would have been packed in with buildings that are now gone. In those medieval days it was simply too dangerous to live outside the protection of the walls so there was probably little or no settlement throughout what is the built up area of today's Lisbon. And the royal palace was also here although little trace of it remains today. Much of this castle was destroyed in the great earthquake of 1755, and the grounds were later cleared to form this beautiful park. So you'll notice that the castle walls surround empty courtyards, so don't expect much in the way of fascinating castle interiors when you come up to visit St. George but do expect to be pleasantly surprised by how interesting these ruins can be. You have a chance to walk around the perimeter on the outside of the walls, and then you can walk inside, up the stone staircases, and walk along the tops of the walls themselves, getting fantastic panoramic views, looking out in all directions around from the top of this hill. You'll have a great look into the part of downtown Lisbon and all the way down through the center, down to the commercial square and out to the waterfront. If you'd like to get a snack before continuing your explorations at the castle, you've got a couple of choices. There's this lovely outdoor terrace cafe that's the Castle Cafe, or you could have a more elegant drink overlooking the city at the House of the Lion restaurant. A little bit more expensive, but a fantastic location. Then you'll be ready to climb some staircases. For these short people, the big steps can be a real challenge to get up and then later on to get down the steps. But it's worth it for them. Young people exploring a castle, what could be more fun than that? It can be really quite amusing to observe the local school kids on their outings. and. If you spend any time in Lisbon, you will run into groups of the local elementary school kids wearing their colorful outfits and walking along with their teachers and instructors and having a grand time. Teachers did a great job of organizing this little parade and they were pretty well behaved. A little bit of tussling back and forth. And they were seeing the whole thing. They, had time in the central courtyard to just play around and then they're exploring and walking and seeing even the back corners of the castle where there are some archaeological digs going on. In fact, many of the adult visitors are not nearly as adventurous. 
not getting to see these interesting earlier remains of the ancient part of the castle. You might be lucky and find some musical entertainment while you're enjoying the castle. This was a classic Portuguese guitar playing in the background that really enhanced the atmosphere of the visit on this particular day. Chance to purchase a CD while we're at it. You don't want to leave the castle without visiting the museum, which provides an introduction to various cultures and lifestyles that date all the way back to the 7th century BC with early traces of the Phoenicians right up through the 18th century. It includes the room where they say Vasco da Gama met with King Manuel. Of course, da Gama was the Portuguese explorer who first discovered the sea route to India in 1498. The oldest visible castle walls were built by the Arabs in the 8th century, but the site's origins go back well before that time to the ancient 5th century Visigoth invaders, and before them, the Romans, who built the first fort here. In the year 711, the Arabs crossed the Straits of Gibraltar in a surprise attack, and within a few years had conquered nearly all of what is now Spain and Portugal. Lisbon was in the hands of the Arabs up until 1147, when it was seized by Portugal's first king, Alfonso, who evicted the Muslims from the country with help from the crusaders of England and France. King Manuel was the first monarch to move away from the fortress in the early 16th century, when the society became strong enough to be freed from those walled confines, and the city began to grow tremendously with the new wealth brought in from the expanding colonies. So after enjoying a stroll through the grounds of the castle, exit through one of the gates in the wall, here you will enter what is probably the very oldest living quarters of the city, first occupied over a thousand years ago, with traces of prehistoric settlement back to 600 BC. The neighborhood is called Santa Cruz do Castelo, and it's a very special spot because it's tucked up right outside the castle walls. A little different than Alfama, which is adjacent, and you'll easily walk from one neighborhood to the next within five or 10 minutes. But do spend a little time walking around in these narrow lanes. This Castelo district is only a couple of square blocks, so it's very easy to walk in along one narrow residential pedestrian lane and enjoy these ancient homes and facades and some colorful balconies. And there's a few shops scattered here and there, but it's still mostly a residential neighborhood. You go in for a couple of blocks, there's a small square, trees, a little car park, and uh, some rather dilapidated buildings that might make a good fixer-upper, perhaps a good investment. This would be a charming place to live. And after you have a look around the square, then back out along another lane. Also, it just takes a few minutes to walk along and enjoying, again, these really, really old historic buildings. You have to remember, this was the residential neighborhood that is within the confines of the castle itself. So this was a protected district back in the Middle Ages and 14th, 15th centuries, when the town was always subject to attack from pirates coming in from the sea, this would have been the safest place to live. In the typical medieval fashion, you have your residences within the walls of the castle and right next to the walls of the castle. And it's still here today. Even though most visitors overlook it, they'll exit the castle and just head right down, either back onto their tour bus or heading back down through Alfama. So just take this little detour, you'll enjoy it. And this will lead you directly into Alfama, the oldest residential part of Lisbon, the old town, a great place to explore. We have another movie entirely devoted to a walking tour of Alfama. Be sure to look for it. Here's those kids again, done with their visit, but we are not finished with our exploration of the castle. Now we're going to have a look at it with our local guide, Isabel. 
She has a few more things to tell us about the location and the history of this great structure. And now we are going this way, please. Okay, here we are really at the top of the hill. So this is the oldest hill of Lisbon. Lisbon, the city, uh, the center of the city stands on seven different hills. This is the highest and the oldest hill of the city. It was here that the first the Romans built a fortress, then it was enlarged by the Arabs and it was conquered by the Portuguese. The fortress with the towers where the uh, soldiers were, it's a little bit further up to the left. The city was first conquered by the Portuguese in 1147. The capital of the city was still another city further uh, north. It was only a hundred years after the conquest of Lisbon when the Portuguese conquered the south of Portugal where is now the Algarve that uh, the capital of Portugal was moved to Lisbon and it was King Manuel I in the 16th century the one who built the big monastery that decided to build the fortress we saw in the first day uh, to defend the entrance of the river. He built two fortresses, one of on each side of the river. Once the fortresses were built there and they defend the entrance to the Lisbon Harbour, he thought there was no need to the walls around the city anymore because until the 16th century Lisbon was a walled city like the Arab city initially built here. So most of the walls were destroyed to open the streets and to develop the city so uh, first to the valley here which is now downtown and it was there in the trade square that the king decided to have his new palace in the 16th century and all the wealthy families and the nobles that lived here by the castle they also wanted to have their new homes built down there in the new areas of Lisbon. This valley here that was completely destroyed by the earthquake of 1755 so today is the downtown area the Baixa from the 18th century. Over there you can see the statue of our first king Alphonse I so he was the one who conquered the city uh, in 1147 and from here you have a nice view over the river estuary that's the narrowest part of the estuary where the bridge was built two kilometer long bridge in 1966 and if you look towards that side so the estuary is much larger so now we are going to walk here by the wall I'm going to show you the city centre and then we make a small uh, walking tour and there are some washrooms near the fortress so we'll make a stop there and if you want to buy a bottle of water or something. We have another hill over there and the valley between the two hills, the one where we are and the other one over there, is what we call downtown Baixa and it was uh, built as a new city after the earthquake. So you can see the ruins of a church. Can you see a church without roof? That's Carmo church that was destroyed by the earthquake and was never rebuilt. Nowadays the church is an archaeological museum. Can you see the metallic tower? So that's the lift that is a mean of transport to take the people to the top of the hill to the Chiado and Bairro Alto areas. Now if you take a look to the right hand side you see the trees going uphill that is the Liberdad Avenue. And when you look towards the right, you are looking towards the north, the most modern part of Lisbon. And it's there that you see the modern buildings, taller buildings, but not really very tall. We are in an earthquake uh, area. We have very strict rules for construction. And so tall buildings are not allowed in uh, Lisbon. And this area here was uh, rebuilt and restored to uh, have a restaurant. And the name of the restaurant is Casa do Leão, meaning the lion's house because this part of the palace was a building where King Manuel kept a lion. A lion was brought from Africa in the early 15th century to, as a gift to the king and so they kept the name lion's house when they decided to have the restaurant here. Okay, let's go this way. Here on your left you can see what we call really the fortress. That's where the soldiers were and the towers, the tower that had all the treasures and the archives of the royal family when the royal palace was here so it was inside this fortress. Also the water reservoir and they used to have water so running around the, the, the walls here for a better uh, protection. These walls were restored in 1940. You can see that part of the walls we can see that they are comparatively modern or new and part of the walls are so the original ones from the uh, Middle Ages. 
The palace was actually destroyed in the 18th century, but as the king had other palaces uh, down there, so this was never rebuilt. It was rebuilt recently, and now we have a couple of rooms there where they do some temporary exhibitions. So they just rebuilt the main walls. They did not uh, rebuild it as it used to be. As we finish up our look at the castle, we'd like to invite you to look at our other movies about Lisbon. We have an Alfama walking tour. We've got Bairro Alto and several other episodes about this great capital of Portugal. If you enjoy our programming, please subscribe and share it with your friends. And comments are always welcome. Thanks very much. And here's one final tip for you. You can take public bus number 737 right from the heart of downtown to the castle. It leaves from Plaza Figuera, right next to Rocio Square. Very convenient. From the castle, you can easily walk over to another outstanding panorama terrace. Rua de Santiago will take you there in just about five or 10 minutes and get a great view of the Monastery of St. Vincent. Our guide will tell us about that saint in a moment. But first we want to stop and take some photos with this great background. And you'll find yourselves helping each other out, taking shots of strangers and getting to know some people, enjoying the view. This was done before the selfie stick, back when people actually asked each other for help taking a picture. Thank you. Now we rejoin our guide Isabel Nevis while she tells us a little bit about the statue of St. Vincent here on the terrace. Here we have the statue of St. Vincent. St. Vincent is the patron saint of Lisbon and he's always represented with a boat, a ship and two birds. The birds were black crows. So now I'm going to show you the view from that side. You'll find this terrace is one of those places it's just hard to pull yourself away from. The view is captivating. You can see more details every time you look. The people are fascinating. You might strike up some conversations, share some recent travel tips maybe. And you'll find this neighborhood has got some charm. There's some tourist shops, there's old buildings and the funky street with the tracks running through the middle of it and the old trams buzzing by. One of the great directions you can take from this terrace is walking down the steps into Alfama, the old historic neighborhood of Lisbon. And we will take you there in a separate movie. Look for it on our YouTube channel. When you're all done with your visit on top of the hill and you want to head back down into the main part of the city of Lisbon, the easiest way and most fun way is to hop one of these old historic trams. They come by very frequently. The trams of Lisbon are one of the really quaint phenomena of this city. The tram called the Electrico, it's so popular that it can get very crowded, so it's a good idea to get there early or sometimes hop on going in the other direction and then turn around later. These picturesque old trams are a big part of the identity of Lisbon, something like the cable cars of San Francisco, and they've been running on their extensive routes for a hundred years, providing a real service to visitors and to local commuters. We have many more movies about Lisbon, which you can see on our YouTube channel.